Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoyed these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here on Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing the Tudor Grand Tour Chronograph Automatic. 42 millimeters in stainless steel. This is a sporting and stylish Tudor water resistant chronograph that's 150 meters resistant and yet very much a bit of a motorsports reference in form and function. It's a lovely piece. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it's a big watch, no doubt. At 42, it's 14.4 millimeters thick, and lug to lug, the watch spans a very reasonable 49.4 millimeters. It's a modern looking watch because of the immense 24 millimeter spacing between the lugs, so it has a nice broad planted footing and stance on the wrist. Zoom in on a little bit, you can see that the bracelet is more substantial than I expected. I have high expectations for Tudor and Rolex bracelets, but in general, I don't expect the Tudor bracelets to feel Rolex solid, and this one does. Broad, though somewhat narrow links, you can see that their cross section is short, but they're nicely arrayed with staggered centers in large polished format, polished outer faces, shoulders in satin, Removable links fixed by screws, so no pin sleeves here despite the price point. You can see that there are also three anchoring points inside the clasp so you can make fine adjustments. What really surprised me here is just how solid the swing arm feels, and you can see that not one, not two, not three, but four ceramic pin snaps were used internally. They're spring-loaded ceramic balls that are used to maintain the closure tolerances of the clasp over time as the steel cannot aggress against the ceramic. It's a Tudor Shield lift lock system, which is a lovely way of styling your clamshell locking system. And then, of course, you've got a case that is lovely and surprisingly stylish. It's not the super case that you see on Rolex models today. It's actually a little bit more curved and a bit more sensual and sinuous and sexy. I, I like it. It's, it's a bit more ambitious. Satin hoods to the lugs, polished flanks. You can see the Tudor Shield logo. These screw-down crowns are brilliant, and Rolex should use them on the Daytona immediately. They are quarter-turn crowns. You can barely feel the amount by which they turn, but with one quarter turn, they're rendered non-functional, and the watch is 150 meters water resistant. With a quarter turn in the opposite direction, you gain the ability to actuate the chronograph. It is a brilliant system, and again, I think this should be on the Daytona like yesterday. The bezel itself is a 12 hour format and you can see inboard there's a lovely sloped ray hot in satin and then there's another sloped ray hot beneath it that features a staggered checker style racing dial calibration to more easily read the one eighth of a second chronograph. You can see that the dial features all applique indices and handsome polished chapter rings for the sub registers which have a bit of an automotive motif about them. I almost feel like I'm looking at the red line of an automotive tachometer when I stare at the constant seconds over at 9 o'clock. A lovely sporting tritone of silver, white, black, and red. You can see that the registers are nicely dished and sunken to add another focal plane, and the logo, the shield at 12, is also applique. There's a tri-date, the idea being that if the minute hand is obscuring the date, you can read the succeeding and preceding date and thus discern the correct date for any given day. Turn it all over. Underneath the case back, Valju 7753. It's a 7750 that's been reoriented 90 degrees, so you have more of a classic Daytona style tri register chronograph dial. 28,800 vibrations per hour, 25 joules, automatic winding, 42 to 44 hour power reserve, obviously 150 meter water resistant, it is a cam lateral clutch chronograph, but a very well tuned example by a Tudor. I can actually feel a crisp interaction with the chronograph pusher that really impresses me. I'll also mention that since it's a 7753, the watch features hacking or stop seconds, but because of the reorientation of the dial, you lose the quick set. So that's one feature a standard 7750 would have that a 7753 does not. And if you're into Daytonas, you know those are traditionally 100 meters. Well, this watch is 150 meters. So while it's perfectly appropriate for trackside fun at Daytona International Speedway, it's also Perfectly suitable for splishing splash or even light duty diving at Daytona Beach itself. See this motorsports inspired steel Tudor chronograph, the Grand Tour Automatic, and make it yours on the watch box. Tudor Grand Tour Automatic Chronograph.